What's going on, New York? They're rowdy. I lost Jason for a moment. Oh, that's that's going right, on. I did it! Where, where did you go? The amount of stretching he did backstage, you do not want to know. It's taken me hours of preparation. You pulled it off. You did not tear an ACL. I will not have breath for the rest of the show. <laughs> but what's, for you. What's going on, Foot Clan? They showed up. They showed up. I'm so excited to be here. We're excited to be here. We're excited. An airline wanted to take us here. <laughs> In a plane. That's not a given these days. That landed. We made it. We're here. We got a great show for you tonight. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Brooks is here. Oh, Brooksy! Give it up for Brooks. He's here somewhere. Who knows? He's up there in the lights. Hey, you guys ready for a show? I'm ready. You guys ready for a mailbag drop? Yeah! Look, look. Chicago brought the fire. Oh. Okay, well, look, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, we're not saying that they're better than you. No, no, what no, no. What we're saying is that they killed it, and the pressure is on. It. We're better! Okay, <laughs> prove, prove it. it. Prove it. So we got live mailbag on the show today. We're going to get it started. And a quick reminder before the show starts, we will be hanging out as long as they let us. Do some meet and greet after the show, so hang out, say hi. We'd love to get a picture with you. Oh, they like that. I like that answer. They like that answer. Jason will catch his breath. He'll hang out with no, us. No, he won't. We I'll take a quick shower, and I'll be ready to go. Hey, Brooks, we ready for a show? I think he said yes. <laughs> To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, New York City! They are rowdy, they are ready to go. This is fun. I'll be honest, I have no idea of anything that you've said so far. I know. He's, he said, Woo! <laughs> Welcome into stop number two on the People's Fantasy Tour. We're in New York City. New, New York City! New York City! We've got a great show for you guys tonight. We're full of salsa and sabaros. That's true, the classic <laughs> New York delicacies. As Michael Scott would say. <laughs> My get, man. Yeah, get bodied, yes. salsa. <laughs> We've got a great quick question on the show today. I'm going to take some shots at Mike on it. We've got a brand new segment. We've got a live mailbag. New York's bringing the drop today. Mike, you're off. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> so, very excited. Here we go. You ready for this? I'm by ready. The way, by the way, if you're listening at home, you can still come to the show in San Francisco. LA sold out, you can't come, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Not a lot. Unless you're gonna Phoenix, be Phoenix, you can come, ballerslive.com, grab a ticket. Here's the quick question that I have for you gentlemen today. You get to compare a player to a movie. So your best player movie comp. Okay. Can you do it? All right. I can, I lean. Mike, you can, you can kick it off. I lean back in my seat like I don't already have an answer prepared. <laughs> Yes. Consider it. Mm, this is Think tough. about it. <laughs> so many movies, so many players, Mike. All right. Here, I'll, I'll kick off the show with this. Antonio Brown is Home Alone 2. <laughs> I really like that. Because here's the deal. The first one, Home Alone, that's a holiday classic. Nay, a... <laughs> <laughs> movie classic. A theatrical Andy, masterpiece. Andy almost did a spit take all over So me. many Academy Awards. Yes, go on. And with the success of Home Alone, you knew, you knew there would be a cash grab. They're going to go for it. They're going to come out with a sequel, but they asked too much of the audience. The mom. She really going to lose her kid again? I mean, <laughs> look, the parents out there, yes, one time. We've all been on a vacation without the third child. It, these things happen. But lose him again? Nay. 
<laughs> and of the entire world, the, the wet bandits, the sticky bandits, they're just going to happen to show up and cross the street and run into him. <laughs> they're asking too much of the audience. They did their best. Oh, no. They did their best to duplicate the first magical movie. And it's not even that Home Alone 2 is bad. It's actually... I actually like it. It's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. good. It's pretty good. But when you watch it, aside from when Marv is being pelted in the face with bricks over and over... <laughs> You actually wish you were watching uh, Home Alone 1. That's why Antonio Brown is, not gonna be the same. is Home Alone 2. It's going to be okay. So it's like Antonio Brown 2, the Oakland Raiders. Exactly. Uh, Thank you, Jason. You. Yeah, I got Thank you. you. We get to see some of that on Hard Knocks, too. Yeah, so... <laughs> Saquon's better. It's not uh, even the right position, man. <laughs> He said the second one is better. Oh, Someone, the second one is Saquon. better. Someone oh. thinks the second one is better. Draft Antonio with the 101. Yeah. Yes. You're going to be He's really happy. Yours. Yeah, so my my comp here is a guy that we've we've talked about before. Damian Williams. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! D-Will. Which one? Who owns Damian Williams? You're the ones cheering. All right. So who is Damian Williams like? Damian Williams is like the it. upcoming movie... The Joker. Okay, because look, I love Joaquin That's, Phoenix. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Joaquin Phoenix. Robert De Niro. Oh. And those are the, superstars. Those are superstars. Like, those could be two of the best actors to ever enter the superhero, supervillain realm. It's going to be a hit. You have the Joker character, the whole universe, which is awesome. I mean, everything on paper seems like it's good, except I think the movie's going to suck. Mmm. <laughs> Mm. I don't think it's going to be good. And so... <laughs> they like got, the comp. They like the comp. It's 50-50 out here. So, look. You've got Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes. It's unbelievable. You've got the universe of Kansas City Chiefs. The oh. Kansas City Chiefs' number one running back is going to be great. Right now, it's Damian Williams. So, it's like, hey, everything on paper says this is set up for success. I'm just afraid that he sucks. <laughs> so, that's my comp. All right. Mike, this is where I'm coming after you. You know my thoughts on this movie. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know the AFI's thoughts on this movie, don't too. Don't care? Yeah, they're because, wrong. Because Jason agrees with me. That's why. That's all that matters. <laughs> Alan Robinson is Blade Runner. Oh, get bodied, <laughs> Alan <laughs> Robinson. What, what did he say? What did they say? Worse than Blade Runner? Impossible. Listen, Blade Runner is boring. <laughs> boring and overrated okay yes and here's the, yes I, I know you like it i know some of you like it because you like mike so i know there's some of you here's the thing people think blade runner and alan robinson are better than they are and and the movie starts up and it's really great kind of like alan robinson's glory glorious year in jacksonville 1400 yard season you think it's going to be great? You're into it. Those deep songs. Oh, they're setting oh, the table. Oh, they're setting Dude, the don't, table. Did, don't you dare besmirch that soundtrack. But halfway through, halfway through, you realize this movie's just not going to be as good as everyone said it well, was it, supposed it, well, to be. Well, halfway through, you go, this movie hasn't done anything. And that's where you're going to end up with Alan Robinson. You're riding on the laurels hmm. of what he has done. And he's overrated, and after three hours, you realize you should have done something else with your afternoon. I'm sorry, Blade Runner fans, but Look, you're wrong. You're wrong. All I heard would you, was you say Alan Robinson is an intellectual masterpiece. Yes. As are you, Mike. Oh, don't As thank you. As are you. You're saying I'm Blade Runner. I'm saying you might be boring and overrated. But either way. Oh. Hmm. Fight, 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 How's fight. that feel? Hey, listen. That's our player movie comps. Before, <laughs> before we get into the news, I do want to give a very special shout out to Absolutely. Carlene and the team from St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. They are hanging out with us. They were in Chicago. They're here tonight. We're partnering with them all. Yeah, you can see the pin on our chest. But this whole tour, we're partnering with them. All of the VIP tickets went to St. Jude. And as you guys know, the Ultimate Draft Kit. We're partnering with St. Jude on the Ultimate Draft Kit. A dollar of every Ultimate Draft Kit goes straight to them. So once again, give it up for St. Yes. Jude. Very happy to be working with such an incredible organization doing, doing work that has to be incredible done. Incredible work.
much more important than the stuff we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into yeah. the, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, we have a few things I want to get into. Take your temperature on these things. Let's start with Packers coach Matt LaFleur. Everyone's excited. <laughs> you got to hit the train for this piece of news. You want, you want me to yes, hit the train? Yes, of course I want the high train. This is a ridiculous. He wants the running backs more involved in the passing game. I'm a big Aaron Jones fan. Do, do you care? Look, we all want him more involved in the passing game. Yeah. I want Aaron I want Jones him. more involved in the Packers game. But do you ca- <laughs> In the Packers game? Yes. As, as we all do. Most efficient running back in football. 5.5 a carry. It's going to be great. I mean, who, who's counting? But do you really care that LaFleur came out and said something like this? Yeah, I, you know, I care in the sense that LaFleur being there... Focusing on the running game is important. So you get so caught up with Aaron Rodgers that what happens last year happened, and you have the Packers' lowest rushing total of their storied franchise history. That's not Aaron Rodgers' game. So LaFleur coming out and saying, hey, look, we've got to get these running backs more involved. And it's not just LaFleur. So a lot of the beat reporters from the Packers area have talked about in the, in the open mini camp that they were able to go to, there were several tweets coming out about, they just got Aaron Jones the ball in space on a well-designed receiving play. That's something that they didn't do enough of last year. So it's optimistic. It's the then. coach saying he's doing it, and then matched by the implementation. You know, it, coach speak is coach speak, right? He's going to say everyone's doing great. I'll bet he wants uh, everybody, everybody more involved. Yes. He wants to get everybody the ball a more, little bit more this year. As long as he doesn't talk about Jimmy Graham, we're okay. Because <laughs> then I know he's a bold-faced liar. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I think when it's matched with what you've seen in the minicamp so far, it's, it's important news. There was some news that Lamar Miller mm. – Maybe the new Frank Gore of the NFL. Soon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. He's got about 20 years yeah. to go. But he surprised, he surprised fantasy owners. Frank Gore's not gone yet. <laughs> yeah. the, He's the, still here. Like, this was the, – the big plays hadn't happened in Houston like they did in Miami. Once he got the big workload in Houston, they didn't happen. Then at the end of last year, all of a sudden, a couple of monster touchdowns. Now, Mike, he's, right. he's shed eight pounds. And <laughs> I found him. You found them? Uh, yes. They're yours? He gave well, them? It's, it's how the universe works. Does, you know, you talk a lot about players, what happens in the offseason, what positions you like to see, yes. gain weight, lose weight. So Lamar Miller, he's a value in our ultimate draft kit based on draft position. Yes. As of right now, the Houston Maybe Texans, a reluctant value? <laughs> that's a very appropriate response. They still have done nothing in Houston to address the running back position. They are hoping Deontay Foreman can be back, but... I mean, the dude had negative rushing yards to end the year. It, coming back from the Achilles injury as a running back, it's extremely difficult. But clearly, uh, what they said with their actions is they believe that between Lamar Miller and Foreman, they think they have enough. And losing weight as a running back, it, it's, it's only been a positive impact in my yeah, experience. Yeah, it, it is really true. I would also say losing weight as a podcaster <laughs> would be great. That would be awesome. Would be? It would be great. So, and, and someday, someday, that jump, it will be. That jump was impressive. Thank you. Yeah. This is, this is more right. like, a, like a fall off. Now, but, you know, whatever. It's been a long time since I've got to play, oh my since goodness. I've got to play this drop. Yes. But Seahawks.com is reporting that Will... Why, why are we talking about this? One reason so I can play the yes, drop. Yes. Will Disley expected <laughs> to have a big role. The Big Montana! Get healthy, Will. Get healthy. Will Disley. I like they're clapping along <laughs> with Will with Big Montana. I want to do it again. Oh, we're having a party, yeah! Oh. Will Disley. <laughs> I can't even stop. Get on the whistle. Here's the truth about Will Disley. If anything happens with Will, shut Disley, up, Mike. <laughs> If anything happens with Will Disley and his career, like, if he signs a sponsorship with some boot company. Oh, man. Or who makes the jackets? Sometimes like, things work North out. North Face. <laughs> I mean, no, he's going to get that awesome. He's a Wrangler man, Mike. You know he's a Wrangler yes. man. He's going to go climb Everest. We're yes. climbing Everest. We'll, like, 
You owe it. The check should be in the mail, Will. Stay you owe us money. Stay healthy first. Yes. But can he make a difference? He, he, he didn't have enough of a sample size with Will Disley. Nobody knew his name. Uh, Correct. All last offseason, we were looking for somebody else to step in it was Jimmy Graham's shoes. Yeah. And it was Will. Yeah. So do you, you kind of glance his way? No. Okay. <laughs> but that drop was cool, right? No, it, if, if, he was, if he were healthy, it wasn't coming off the injury that he is coming off of. Which, it, correct me if I'm wrong, it was the patella, right? It is right? patella, yes. I mean, that's, it's a, that's, that's called, a bad one. It's called your kneecap leaves your knee. Yeah, not good. And, and it's not a good gotta, situation. Gotta so all, all the best to Will. We hope he can be it, something. He's, he's very fun for yeah, the show. Yeah, it's just worth watching week one, week two, seeing if he's out there, seeing if he's Are healthy. you going to draft him? Uh, no, I'm not going to okay. draft him. But, but I would, he would definitely, if he comes out and plays 80% of snaps, and even if, he, you know, if he's running a ton of routes, no even more if Doug he's Baldwin. not involved. Because, yeah, you, you, you lose Doug Baldwin. I'll pick him up off the waivers. All right, last bit of news. Darren Urban out of Arizona projects Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, Andy Isabella, the starting three in Arizona. The new offense, nobody's seen it. It's a it's, bold, bold take by it's by It's mysterious. Urban. Could be in the shotgun 90% of the time. It, Is this something different than you expected, and it doesn't make Isabella not. or Kirk somebody you care about? I mean, Kirk was the second-round pick. Last year, Isabella was the second-round pick. This year, the, the bigger thing from that, kind of the things that we're talking about was – how far behind is Hakeem Butler actually in the depth chart? Is he behind Kevin White? I mean, which would be... Insulting. Sad. Yeah. At this point, it would be at least a little bit troubling if he's Chad if he's Williams also likely a cut in Arizona. Yeah, that makes sense. So you care about Christian Kirk, potential value late. Sure. The history with Kyler Murray. Larry Fitzgerald or Christian Kirk? I'm, I'm going to take Kirk. Yeah, I, I would take Kirk as well because while I think Larry's going to be solid, I don't think Larry has some opportunity of like just hidden juice to like break out back to the Does top. Does he have gummy 12. bear juice? Oh, that, that, oh, he would be incredible. Bouncing everywhere. He uh, even Kirk, sorry. Kirk at least has you know the the hope that he can really step forward in year two. All right, that was today's news and notes. We've got our main segment coming up. Don't forget, grab the sleeper app. Yeah, yeah. You guys ready? Let's do it. Hold them or fold them. That drop was money. <laughs> you never hesitate to compliment yourself. When you have a chance. Just give me a chance to do it. It was wonderful. Yeah, I, I gave you a chance at the beginning, and then you called me, what, like boring and overrated? I did say that. <laughs> In fairness, you just dear, hurt me. You're a dear friend. <laughs> you're a dear, dear friend. Oh, You're not you guys overrated. love each other. Listen, we're doing hold them or fold them, and here's what we're looking at. A player's average draft position, what they did last year, maybe some of the hype, the narratives heading into 2019, and we're deciding, we're making a... Uh, determination are we holding are we folding i think jason you get to kick this thing off sure thing set the table for your player the first player i'm going to bring up to the table here is mvs marquez valdez scantling Ooh, a so now the question, reception yes yes uh last year they don't like three name players as no, they a don't. rookie had a ho-hum season he had a middle of a season where you know he he showed all right that was after geronimo allison got injured after the first four weeks, and then he still hit a rookie wall despite not being there for the first four weeks. I went back, watched a lot of film, and he was out of sync with Aaron Rodgers. So the question is, am I holding or am I folding when it comes to MVS? He's a 12th round pick right now. I am. What are you doing? I am going to take my chips and I'm going to put them in. Whoa. I'm going to double down. I'm going to split the aces. I'm going to let That's it ride. I'm going to go all in. Jason, that's the wrong game. I'm, can... I'm going to hold Yahtzee. them. I'm going to hold them. <laughs> Mousetrap. You're, you're holding them. I am holding them. Here's, here's the deal with MVS. Marquez Valdez Scantling is in and of just himself in a vacuum outside of the Packers. I think he's a very good wide receiver. He's obviously a freak athlete, right? He's 6'4". I don't know if you realize he ran a... Four, three, seven. Like he is. I did not realize. I, that. I did he, not realize. He that. is an amazing athlete who can really get down the field. And when I went back and watched film, it was just stupid how they used him. Every now and then they'd have him stretch the field, and he was great. 
And so often they're like, well, let's use his, his speed as like in the screen game. And that just wasn't his game. And you kind of saw a flipping of roles from last year to this year with Geronimo Allison and MVS. Aaron Rodgers is who matters the most when it comes to Green Bay Packers wide receivers. It doesn't matter what the three of us say, right? If I say, no, you know, it's going to be Jeff Janis. Unless it's, we're talking about Will Disley, then it matters. Well, sure, of, of course. Um, but when Aaron Rodgers likes you, you're on the field, you get the ball. When he doesn't, you don't. There were reports that, like, maybe he was – uh, not throwing to MVS at the end of the year because he was running Mike McCarthy's routes, all these weird things. He was but running now, the play. He was running the play. And How dare Rogers you? does not like that. So, but now in the offseason, you see Aaron Rodgers because unlike coaches, Aaron Rodgers will come out and say, This guy needs to step it up. This guy's running the wrong route. He's not, you know, he, he, they'll, he'll go, he'll just speak the truth about his players. And what he said is he's had an incredible spring. He looks great and he's a true every down player. And that's the thing. All the beat reporters are saying in two wide receiver sets, it's MBS. It's not Geronimo Allison who's going several rounds earlier. And the, 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 uh, the organization of the offense, when you watch MBS talk, he says he's getting used downfield. They're opening up his speed does, using that. Does holding MVS mean you are automatically folding Allison, who some, That's a great question. who some presume are is just going to step back into the role that he started well but didn't. So didn't the hold him and fold him thing is based on where these players are going in drafts. If it was today, I am bypassing Geronimo Allison. He's still much earlier. Now I assume well, after this podcast, by early, I mean you're talking. 8 11, ninth, I mean, he's a ninth round pick essentially. Sure, but he, but if I know I'm targeting MVS in the later rounds, I'm not going, I'm not going to take You won't both. grab them both. I don't want to grab both because I believe it's going to be MVS. So I guess you, I'm folding. I'll just say I'm folding on Geronimo Allison right now. Training camp, preseason, could that swing it a lot between those two guys just because of the unproven yes, chemistry, long term chemistry? It could definitely sway things. And, and once, once MVS was involved, he was still on pace for 91 targets. After week five last year, if you look at the guys going next to him right now, you're talking about Noah Fant and Goskowski. Like, you're talking about kickers. So he's basically free. And just as a reminder to everybody out there. Noah Fant's a kicker. Well, Goskowski is. Noah Fant <laughs> is a rookie tight end, which should never be drafted. Anyways, the, since 2011, Aaron Rodgers wide receiver two, his second best wide receiver, five times. They have finished in the top 30 at wide receiver, four times in the top 20, two times in the top 10, the second wide receiver on his team. You can get this guy for free. So, well, look, I, my chips are pushed in. I'm in on it. I like it. And the thing is, is that was what people – those were the arguments for Allison last right. year. And then you kind of felt burnt trying to get that – wide receiver two for Rodgers, but it really was just the injury that disturbed that narrative from being true, the history from being true. I, I think it's just difficult. You know, Mike, you started the offseason liking Allison. A yeah. lot of positive press for MVS. I'm, I'm keeping my eyes on it. So it, I'm not doubling down. Yeah, I'm I, not doubling down. I don't know where my chips are going yet. Uh, I'm, I'm actually okay with a ninth round pick, an early ninth round yeah. uh, with average draft position. I would, I'm perfectly fine grabbing both of them because I, I, I think that it will reveal itself pretty quick who's going to be the guy. All the offseason chatter is Geronimo is going to move from the outside to the slot. And I mean, it's the, the wide receiver, too, you've talked about. I mean, it, it varies because you're talking it, it was it's been Randall, Randall Cobb. Cobb. It was Jordy and Randall Cobb. Like, yes, James Jones caught all the touchdowns, and you could plug him in all here right. and there, but Randall Cobb was the guy you would rather have. So is, is MVS more of a secondary option, or is he just going to catch eight or nine touchdowns but be a low volume guy? No, he's going to be great. There okay. you go. It's okay. been settled. It, it, just in the case judge people, rule. In, in case people were wondering, I just would clear that up. Yep. He's doubling down. Mike, you're, you're up. All right. Who are you going to talk about? The player I want to talk about, he is a wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. I want to talk about Jarvis Landry, who is currently going, oh, this is not going to go well. <laughs> okay. Well, that, there, we're back. I got him back. He's going in the fifth round, about the middle of the fifth round last year. Are, are they holding or folding? Okay, okay, well, that's very interesting that we have a mob of people screaming fold, and he's going in the fifth round of half PPR drafts. They haven't started. 81 mock, mock for 976 it. and four last year. That's actually pretty good. I am folding. A hold. I am folding. You're folding. I'm folding on Jarvis Landry. You're laying him down. And here's the thing. Jarvis Landry is a good slash great wide receiver for his NFL team, but is he good 
for fantasy. Last year, Jarvis Landry was a wide receiver one or two on about 37.5% of his games. That's not good. You know what? That barely tops the trademarked Cooper line brought to you by Amari Cooper, who can't sustain a wide receiver one or two game. Once Baker was the full-time starter, you were happy with Jarvis four out of 13 games. You just kept waiting and waiting for him. I think his ADP is where it's at because it's really hard to pass on the name Jarvis Landry you are after correct. a history of succeeding because, for because fantasy Because he owners. is a good wide receiver for his NFL team. And we love Jarvis because we, th we look back at the years when he was a Miami Dolphin with fondness in our hearts. <laughs> and over those three years, he was averaging 153 targets yes. per year. Every throw is, that Ryan Tannehill made. Is absolutely insane. And it wasn't just the target volume, but it wasn't the play volume. It was him compared to the second wide receiver option or the second just passing option. In 2015, Jarvis 166 targets, second place on that team. Jordan Cameron with 70 targets. Of course Jarvis Landry is going to make sense. 2016, very similar. Jarvis 131, Devontae Parker at 87. Look, it even happened this past year. He's so good though. He is so good. I'm so sorry to have to be doing this to you, Andy. <laughs> Last year, Jarvis 149 targets, 26%. Njoku, the number two target leader on the team with 88. I hate to break it to Jarvis Landry. The split between his targets and the number two target are not going to be a tremendous gap unless you're talking about they have swapped places and the number one target is now Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry is the number two target. Do we still look like Odell Beckham here? Okay, good. He didn't want to leave. He didn't have a Dave Gettleman in his analytics said it's we should. Me. Does David, David, Gettleman. does David Gettleman make trades on a typewriter? Of course no, he of does. Of course he does. <laughs> no. And he puts it in the mail. No, it's gonna, he faxes it over. Oh, yeah. He's a fax machine he's, guy he, for sure. I, I, Look, <laughs> in the eight games where Hugh Jackson still was somehow the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, about 32 games too long, but in those games, Jarvis was getting targeted 12 times a game. Freddie Kitchens came in after he was fired. He's the new OC. He's calling the shots. Eight games, Jarvis was averaging seven targets a game. His volume absolutely plummeted. Who's now the head coach? Who's now calling the shots for the offense? Freddie Kitchens. Whoop. So I am absolutely folding on a fifth round value for Jarvis Landry. And they, New York likes that. Now, Jason, I'll follow up and ask you this question. What, is, what are the odds that Mike regrets laying the cards down on Jarvis Landry with, uh, with the fifth round pick? I can't imagine him regretting it, <laughs> really. I mean, like, when I'm in a draft right now, when I'm in a draft right now, Jason, and I, you're see, a smart man. I see where Jarvis is, I'm, I have not been able to pull the trigger on taking Jarvis and I feel one it too. single time. I feel it, too. In the middle of drafts, like, holy crap, Jarvis Landry's there. What's so funny is, like, for years. He's like, not a touchdown guy. We all have weaknesses in fantasy football. And my greatest weakness has been taking wide receiver twos for offenses like I just I want the best player I want a one and he's the most talented two of you know there's a handful of teams that have guys like that Diggs and Thielen right but Landry will have opportunities for big plays because of Odell Beckham now, I'm not saying I'm holding him based on a fifth I, round draft position but it's interesting because there's an opportunity that I think sure. maybe we don't see if he comes back into the slot. Yeah, the, being the number two wide receiver for a great quarterback like Baker can succeed. I'm not saying that Jarvis Landry is going to be just terrible seventh this round. year and you be a Seventh round. You want him in the seventh round? But the comp yeah, I'll take yeah. a seventh I, round. I would, sure. take a, I would take a seventh rounder okay. because the 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 worry is he doesn't score touchdowns. He's always been a volume play, and now he's not the volume play. Yeah. So it's a bad yeah. combo. All right, I want to talk about Carson Wentz. That changed quickly. And yeah. here's the thing. I like how they're so polite. The booers were so polite that they let the people that cheered go for a while. The people that cheered, they're like, yes, you've had your time. Now Keep we will cool, proceed to boo. Um, I'm not wearing Jets green tonight. I'm sorry. I'm wearing Eagles green. Oh, 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 oh no, you get didn't. Body. Oh, no, you didn't. I don't you care. Didn't. He's not happy. But let me, t maybe that was a mistake. It's Jets green. <laughs> Yay! I we love, love a turn Robbie coat. Anderson. Yeah! Sam Darnold. Yeah! Adam, Adam Gates. Gates. 
There, right, there it is. Okay, just checking. But he, here's the deal. And by the way, Carson Wentz. I want to talk about Carson. He is a hold for me, so you'll have to get past the emotions and listen for a second. This is fantasy football. This is this fantasy is, football. This is not your team. Uh, hate him in real life, draft him in fantasy. That's exactly. what I'm going to say. But here's the deal. Last season, obviously injured again. He's being drafted. Carson Wentz is being drafted as a fringe quarterback one this year. Jason, you said you're doubling down on MBS. Carson Wentz is my stone cold, probably going to be my my guy, super double down this year, and I want to explain that. Barely being drafted as a fringe QB1. We don't have a small sample size on Carson Wentz from 2017. Mike, I have a question for you. Yes. It's very important. Would you wonder if unicorns existed if you rode one to tonight's show? I rode a unicorn. If you rode one to tonight's show, would you doubt mm. their existence? Well, I would give the horn a good test. Okay, so to you're make sure more it's not thorough. a horse. We've already seen it. We've already seen Carson he, do it. For he came and he said, well, I'm games. a unicorn. Hold on, hold on. So Carson Wentz is a unicorn. Yes. What I'm That's saying what you're telling me? is that if, you, if you're wondering if you can believe something and you've already seen it with your own eyes, it makes it easier to believe it. We have 13 games of Carson Wentz being the number two quarterback in points per game. It wasn't three or four games. There's these really exciting quarterbacks. Oh, what's Baker going to be? He could be a top five guy. Jameis Winston, this is finally Jameis's year. He's going to eat the W this year. Ooh, delicious. And my point is, we've seen it before. Last year, yes, disappointing because he couldn't stay on the field. Still jumped his completion percentage from 60 to 70%. Better passer rating. Mm. One year removed from the ACL injury. If you ask why Carson Wentz is being drafted the way he is, why you, as a fantasy football player, gets a discount on Carson Wentz, it's 100% availability. That's what it should be. Chris Sims, the other day, Chris Sims, former NFL quarterback, he said, this was his quote, he's a more physically gifted version of Andrew Luck. That's mm. the, if you remember, you just mm. have to roll it back a second. Let me talk about his neck beard, though. <laughs> Nobody's more gifted at neck beards <laughs> than Andrew Luck. But the only reason people aren't drafting Carson Wentz to be a top five candidate which is where I have him ranked, is because of the availability. And we're not, I'm not going to bank on Carson Wentz being hurt again this year. I'm going to look for the incredible value on a guy that's already proven he can be a top five guy. But I want to talk about one other caveat here with Carson Wentz. Excited to talk about it. We know the weapons. you got Zach Ertz. you got Alshon Jeffrey. you got Nelson mm -hmm. Aguilar. You've got yep. uh, Dallas Goddard, mm -hmm. who, Jason, I think you're in love with. I am I in love with Dallas Goddard. He's so busy. I love tight end twos. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Dynasty. Dynasty. Okay. I think his future is bright. I love tight end twos behind really young elite tight ends. <laughs> That's, they're great. He Just thinks, remember this. He thinks you're this. boring and he thinks you're overrated. <laughs> Just remember. It's but, been 84 years. But it's Deshaun Jackson time. Deshaun Jackson gets a second tonight. Yeah. By the way, number one in history, 60-yard touchdowns. Deshaun Jackson has not lost a step, but here's what he does to fantasy quarterbacks when he arrives. Donovan McNabb. I know you probably don't like him. Doesn't matter. When he had D-Jax, six more touchdowns a season, 200 plus more yards a season on average compared to without D-Jax. Mike Vick. Mike Vick didn't even throw touchdowns. Except he pretty preferred not except to. He ran for them. Yeah. But except for when he had Deshaun Jackson. He averaged 10 more touchdowns than his career average when he had Deshaun Jackson. Nick Foles had 18 games in his career with D-Jax, 35 without, 28 touchdowns a year with D-Jax, 16 without. Kirk Cousins played exactly 30 games with d -Jax, 30 without, averaged 1,000 more yards a season, three more touchdowns a season. Jameis Winston, he didn't really care. <laughs> right. I looked at, and I looked at every one of his quarterbacks, and this, the numbers couldn't have been more identical. He, would, he, he 20, is who he is. He is Jameis, he doesn't care. But when Fitzpatrick stepped in, he recognized the weapon. That was Deshaun Jackson. He ain't done. He's 32 years old on a fresh contract, arguably the number one deep ball tracker, deep ball receiver in football. Possibly. It means a lot to have Deshaun Jackson there, which, by the way, this is a long way of kind of putting two guys together and saying, go get Deshaun Jackson late in your draft. But Wince is an absolute whole double down guy for me. I absolutely love him. He's a unicorn. Okay. I, look, I'll take Deshaun Jackson as a unicorn. That's fine. Okay. But Carson Wentz, 
But what? if you rode one here, Mike, what? Well, you'd you believe. You still wouldn't believe? You, you still wouldn't is, believe? Is his mane red? It's rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm up Fair. next. I'm going to talk about a huge breakout oh, from this goodness. last year. Oh, my goodness. George Kittle. Fantasy hero. Oh. Fantasy. Fantasy yeah. superstar oh, in the he's making. Oh, so good. He you is love him. a beast of a man. So, New York, what are you doing? Holding or folding? Hold. Oh. I would say, say that's a hold. We've got a row of well, holds. George right. Kittle's friends. Okay. I'm gonna be folding on George Kittle this year. Hot takes. You hot can, snakes and hot takes. Yeah, the beginning you, you of can, the end yeah. for George Kittle. So here's here's the I thing think with George Kittle. Someone said he stinks. I think they said Jimmy G. Oh. They said Jimmy G because oh. he's got a better quarterback. This yeah, year. no, that's just the dude who's ugly. <laughs> So here's the thing. All right, let's talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. Let's talk about the, the, the upgrade at quarterback, right? Well, last year, in the first three games, he played with Jimmy Garoppolo. And in those games, he averaged 6.6 .6 targets a game versus 8.8 .8 targets without Jimmy Garoppolo. He averaged 63 yards a game with Garoppolo versus 91 without Garoppolo. He didn't score any touchdowns with Garoppolo versus... Was, All of his he, touchdowns then just, without him. Just finding himself, Jason. Sure, maybe he was, he was finding absolutely, himself. Absolutely, he was still a young player. He's growing, he's getting better, he's breaking out. He's That's winning all titles. True. But if you look at what happened last year, he ended up becoming the de facto only receiver on the team. Even, even my love for Dante Pettis. Look, Dante Pettis missed games. He didn't catch any balls from the bench while he was injured. None. <laughs> so when Dante Pettis was out, when Dante Pettis was out, he averaged four more fantasy points a game without Pettis than with him. Now look at what's going on this season, right? Now you've got an actual healthy offense that can hopefully run the ball. They've got like 700 running backs. Dante Pettis is now the clear-cut wide receiver one. He wasn't last year. You have Debo Samuel, Jalen Hurd. They even drafted another tight end this year. And so I'm not – look, please don't – Hear what I'm not saying. They drafted I'm not, another tight end. I am not Stop. saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Stop. I, I tried to sneak that that's, one that in was, there. That's not I know, good. that was worthless. Um, A real Dallas Goddard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, got, you caught me, man. I, I suppose you love him, too. Uh, no. But I do love Dallas Goddard, and... I'm okay. on record. So the thing is, is this is not a bust pick. I'm not saying George Kittle's I, – I have George Kittle as my number three tight end. I'm guessing at the end of the year he's going to be the number three tight end. And I'm saying for where he is being drafted right now, if he finishes as the number three tight end, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to regret not getting a wide receiver two or a running back two with your third pick. He's in the top so this half is a, of this the is third a soft round. Fold? This, this, this is, is like a very casual, like, I'll play the next look, hand. Look, this is, I've got an ace deuce in my hand. Ooh. Okay, that's, a lot of people are like, oh, man, that's great. I've got an ace. And then are they, we? And then the, the flop comes, and there's another ace. And so you're betting big. You're betting that third round pick. Except your, your other card's a two, and someone else got a better kicker, and you lose. For all my Texas Hold'em fans out there, that made sense. <laughs> Jason, so, uh, let me save you. So you're passing on George Kittle in the third. Because, obviously, just a handful of rounds later, there's a tight end who wears a blue jersey that you're going to select. I, I assume that to be true, right? I, look, I will take Evan Ingram a whole lot yeah. more than George Kittle. Pander Bear, Pander Bear. I love you all. That's a uh, Giants blue he's wearing. You are darn right. Look, yeah. as of right now, George Kittle's being drafted in a sandwich between A.J. Green and Keenan Allen. If you're taking George Kittle over those two players you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, or yeah. swing for the pick players behind him, like Aaron Jones and, and Marlon Mack. Yeah, I'd rather Do have the, Aaron Jones. And look at the efficiency, right? Like, oh, he was great this year. But he was not just great. He was historically efficient. His yards after the catch at tight end, the best that, that has ever been tracked. Three yards over expectation. That's, that, look, that means, sure, he can get a 70-plus yard touchdown breakaway. We know he can do it. We've seen it before. Yeah, the it was unicorn nice. Exists. I liked it. But he's probably not going to do that multiple times again next year because that doesn't happen. Well, and Pettis might be doing it right. in one game. 
or Debo or so somebody else. You all, it's th- pretty hard to break records room, every year. It's kind of like a 50 touchdown season from Peyton. <laughs> uh, he's still a great fantasy quarterback, but you have a different kind of year between 50 touchdown seasons. Yeah, so unless they all get hurt again. This room you can have your George Kittle. All right. I'll draft whoever you leave to me. All right. All right. All right, I'm going to jump in here. I'll take Ingram later. I want to talk about a running back, a running back who's being selected either at the very end or the very very end of the first round or the very beginning of the second round. He was an absolute waiver wire savior. He was a sensation. Things worked out for this running back. You didn't think you were going to need him. This team didn't think they were going to need him, and all of a sudden they did, and he came through in a big way. I'm talking about James Connor from the running back from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Are we holding or are we folding? I don't know that's who people are saying. The, that's words, a hold. the words really sound similar. He's it's not like that they old. rhyme. Look, here's, here's my argument for James Connor. It's a two parter. One part Pittsburgh Steelers, one part James Connor, peanut butter jelly, the sandwich is delicious. I eat it, I'm full, I'm I'm nutritionalized. That's that's a new word for You're everybody. You're getting your nutrition from peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? You're done right. There's so much sugar in protein. We're good, bro. Don't worry about it. Look, in the last five years, last five, Le'Veon Bell was the Steelers' leading rusher three times. In those years, they ranked second, seventh, and third in total offensive yards. So at worst, a top seven offense. That's pretty good. They ranked seventh, tenth, and eighth in offensive points. Also pretty good. Le'Veon Bell must be the engine that runs the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, weird, because there were two years where Le'Veon Bell wasn't the leading rusher. We're talking about D'Angelo Williams in in that season. D'Angelo Williams, who had had just signed up for his AARP card before signing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes. They were third in yards, fourth in points. 2018 last year, James Conner, the leading rusher for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Fourth in yards, sixth in points. It's almost like the running back doesn't really matter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Connor played in 13 games. He had starter snaps in 11 due to injuries. And in those times, in those 11 games, 11 plus, ninth most touches at the running back position, 12 rushing touchdowns, a feat that that Le'Veon Bell, Mr. 80 bajillion dollars, he is never scored double digit rushing touchdowns so weird he was on a pace for 12 seems like a love bell fold simultaneously but you didn't want to say it we're in new york so i wouldn't look a player i would screen a player i would fold his name rhymes with schmevy on smell yes got it so but back to james connor when he was playing on pace for 1200 yards Last season, the last two seasons, Le'Veon Bell was 1279. Very comparable. Uh, James Conner was on pace for 68 receptions. That's not Le'Veon Bell-esque. Le'Veon Bell, he he caught more passes than that, but that's still pretty freaking good. And you can look back at Mike Tomlin's entire career with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and only one time did he ever go to the RBBC. He likes to have a featured running back. And that was 2012, because Everybody, everybody on that team at the running back position got hurt. Before that, from Willie Parker, Rashard Mendenhall, Lev Bell, D'Angelo Williams, even Isaac freaking Redman. Isaac Redman that got... Was his middle name. Yes, it is. Wow. By birth. Yes. His parents were, were, were very uh, hip with it. Exciting. <laughs> they, were, they were very excited mm-hmm. for the Redman name. Look... Do you guys remember Isaac Redman? Some of you do, but when he played, Liars. He, he got workhorse touches. Now to James Conner. Last year, he was the fifth most elusive running back of the high volume running backs behind only Chubb, Henry, Kareem, and Barkley. He had nine runs of over 20 yards in 215 carries. How did Bell do in 2017 with 321 carries? Oh, he had three. Nine, three. I'm not a math man, woof. Yeah, buzz your girlfriend, woof. <laughs> exactly. James Conner was a running back one or two in 77% of his games. That's the sixth best percentage. That's a higher percentage than Alvin Kamara. He was a running back one, 50, almost 54% of the time. More than Zeke, more than Mixon. James Conner was fantastic, and I do not think you are expecting too much by drafting <laughs> last year's running back six 
at the running back nine price point. So yes, I am holding. You're holding. My, I am holding my pocket kings, James Conner at the end of the first. Now I want to take just a second to apologize, Mike, for calling you boring and overrated. Right before I fold James Conner. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I'm folding him. Yeah, okay. Listening to you talk about James Conner like that. It's a lot like Blade Runner. But I, here's the counterpoint that I have for James Conner. And uh, I like that you said, I believe you are expecting too much from James Conner to draft him where you're drafting him. You, you said it. He's an end of the first round pick, early second round pick. I think you've been mentally toyed with. That's what I believe. Mm. I think you've been deceived a little bit with James Conner because he, look, the impression a fantasy player makes those first six weeks of the year, the first seven weeks of the year, yeah, they can last a lifetime, Mike. 14th round pick. James Conner was a free superstar for every fantasy owner. That's why they were, they're, you're in yes. love with him, right? He meant yeah. so much to your fantasy team. I love a free running back six. A free running back six. That's right. Uh, first, eight, first seven games, he was unbelievable. He actually had the most goal line carries in the league, 13, on pace for 290 carries, 21 touchdowns. Uh, you didn't need Lev Bell. Nobody even cared about Lev Bell. Second half of the season, it wasn't as exceptional. The pace, the opportunities, the numbers, the, the goal line carries, those are very uh, hard. They're not they're sticky. Fluid. They're, they're fluid. They're fluid. They're difficult to repeat all the time. First seven games, it was amazing. Second seven games, not so much. Those first seven games, you said it. He was one of the best running backs in football. The second half, not so much. And we saw that. I think it was RB18 in fantasy points over the second half of the year. RB23 in total points. I'm doing it points per game because I know you said he had a couple snap shortened yes. games. The thing is, this happens. Leonard Fournette in 2017 was the RB6 over the first eight games of the season. That's why he was drafted that way the next year. But over the second half of that season, he was the RB17. The next draft, you, sl you slid him right up there because you had seen it. You had seen what he had done in what was a little bit smaller sample size. And he doesn't have, to me, James Conner, I know we like him. I feel like this is almost unfair to him because he did everything he can do on a football field. But this is fantasy. So you're saying, hey, do I want an RB6 or do I want an RB15? And I think he fits more in that category. He doesn't have tenure. In the NFL, he makes six hundred grand a year. There's, it, Mike Tomlin wants to run one guy. Yes, he does. He's not financially obligated to run James Conner, is my point. So I think what you're actually going to get, why I'm folding him, is I think you're actually going to get a player that ends up in that running back 15 category, and you could do better with that pick in the first round. So, look, I folded James Conner. You held him. I, I don't know what Jason would do. I listened. I listened to Dallas both. Goddard. <laughs> I listened to both <laughs> arguments. I have recently adjusted his ranking. Like right now, live on the show? No, no. like uh, last week. I wasn't. Mm, that sounds like you made up your decision before you heard the arguments. <laughs> it was actually the opposite decision, Mike, because I'm holding. Yeah. James yeah! Conner, I am fine with yeah! where he's being Yo! drafted. I think he's going to be an so, absolutely fine asset. And even the, without Antonio, even without the, that offense, look, the, the look, Antonio is the, the one thing bring you really up. should have brought up. The, no, it was there, but the only crack in my argument that I bypassed was Antonio Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and, and legit, like if you want to, it makes a huge difference. If you want to attack the Pittsburgh Steelers offense and say Antonio Brown is gone. Your argument is, is really strong because all those numbers I'm talking about in the past five years where they're top yeah, ten and everything. That's Home Alone 1. That's, that's Antonio Brown. You go back a little bit further, that's when Antonio Brown is not the number one guy and the numbers are not so favorable. I just believe that Juju is a good enough player that he can step up and keep the Pittsburgh Steelers running at a, at a top folding. 10 level. I, <laughs> <laughs> Very quick change. No, that's the thing. If DB1s can cover Juju and you can shut down the run, they will attack the offense that way. You believe in Juju. You believe in James Conner. Did, we'll we, did we say how many receptions that uh, James Conner had last year? I don't recall. It was somewhere between 50 and 60. I don't know that number. <laughs> Did he really? 55? Oh, how can you uh, fold him, Andy? He's so helpful. All right, hey, we're John. You ready for a mailbag? You guys ready? 
Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's prime them. Are you actually ready for the mailbag drop? We mailbag our, people were ready over there. Mailbag people are ready. Mailbag drop, let's do it. Mailbag. I do declare. Did you, did you feel it? I, look, we're, I, was only, I was only standing because my quads are so strong. Otherwise, the sonic impact would have taken me into the screen. Is that a reflection of Giants Jets hope? How do you have that? Oh, Patriot. It's a different reflection. All right, let's get into the mailbag. All right. Question number one. Good sir, please lean into the microphone, state your name and your question. Hello, my name is Dave Reed, and I first want to thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank Dave you, loves Dave. you. Absolutely. For, thank you for being here. So nice to meet you, uh, Dave. I also want to say, Mike, the haircut, fantastic. Very happy you found a barber. Look, gambles were taken on the haircut, and I came out looking good. It paid off. Uh, so my question is, when you guys were all statting out all the players in the offseason, what was a player issue you had that you looked at and you're like, there, this can't be right. Like, is it like too good, too bad? Like, who, who are some of those guys? Yeah, yeah. For me, it was Russell Wilson, because uh, <laughs> these guys are like, yeah, locked and loaded. He's a, he's a quarterback one, and I took a look at my initial projections, and I think I had him at like quarterback 18, because <laughs> look, man, I. He, it, he could end up as a top 12 quarterback. At, he could because that's what he has been his entire career. But the new offense has absolutely nerfed him. He was efficient levels that we just – it's hard to explain what he did. People are focused on Patrick Mahomes threw 50 touchdowns because he was over an 8% touchdown rate. You know who was also at 8? Russell Wilson. And his attempts are down. They want to be a running team. So – I, I, I went through, I, I had to give him a little bit of a bump because it was just, it was way too low. But I strongly believe if we were doing, if I was going to have to hold or fold Russell Wilson, it's a strong fold. I'm not in on that at all. Yeah, for me, it was a very similar process. I, it was on AJ Green. Like as soon as I was done with the rankings, I went, oh, like, wait, AJ Green's like should be a top seven Wide receiver. It's a superstar. Why is he down here in the in the low teens? And I have a really hard time right now with the toe injury, with just everything going on, his contract situation, his age, his quarterback. I have a really hard time being in on AJ Green this year. Tyler Boyd. <laughs> for me, Tyler Tyler Boyd. I, I think for me it was it was Amari Cooper's end of season stat line, which. It just always looks so good. And you brought it up on the Do Chicago show. Do I need to bring show. up the Cooper line? No, no, because I'm not in on him. But it's the like the Mendoza line. The numbers are right. It's not good. No, it's not good. But he, he will end up in a great place, and you will end up disappointed. So I was still shocked to see, man, he's, the, the end of season numbers as being the one in Dallas, what he did last year, I think they look good. It's just a matter of can he be consistent. And, so. and I'll add uh, Deshaun Watson. He was my number two quarterback. I was like, whoa, didn't see that coming. That's fine by me. Oh, it's I fine like by it. me yeah. as well. <laughs> this is my rankings. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. What's up, ballers? Uh, Brandon What's up? Maloney. Uh, my question is, what advice do you have when drafting with other Foot Clan members, specifically Ooh. for the tight end position where the gap between the top five and the rest of the league is pretty vast? Jack Doyle. <laughs> Just believe. Just believe. Your, your advice in Jack Doyle is, is right in the sense that what you need to do <clears throat> is find the tight end that's late that you believe in. Whether that is Jack Doyle, whether you think um, you, you know, Mark Andrews could break out, Will Disley, uh, Herndon. This is preposterous, what is happening right now. We're making you money, Will. You, you didn't even like that drop when I started it. Look, New York, your, your ability to maintain clapping on beat there was a little it's, disappointing. <laughs> that so hurts your me advice inside. when you're drafting and, with other And for fans? Chris Herndon, I love Chris Herndon long term. Uh, you can't Deuce, draft him. Yeah, dude's not going to play for two games. You can't take a late round shot on a Greg player. Greg Olson? 
Yeah, Greg Olson is not being talked about at all, probably because he sucked last year when he Delaney actually played. Delaney Walker? Oh, Delaney. Yeah, the, the old oh, faithful. The, the ultimate in vanilla ice cream, Delaney Walker. Yeah. You don't want it, and then you go, yeah, it's pretty would good. Would you take Delaney or would you take Doyle? I would take Delaney for sure. Okay. Would you take Doyle or would you take Eifert? I would take Doyle. Would you take Doyle or would you take... Kelsey. <laughs> I'm going Kelsey. Any more brain busters? No, that's good. And as far as drafting with other Foot Clan people, I would just say this. There, look, we've got FootClanLeagues.com, right, where you are joining leagues with other people who all, all – everybody in that league is going to win. Here's what you do. You do your best. <laughs> Everyone's you, winning. You, who, Everyone and wins. And when you win, know that – the one you're, man leagues. You're actually the best. The best are the people that win in those leagues. Hon honestly, my, like real advice would be uh, back before the, the show really got going, I would conglomerate the rankings of people that I trust, uh, you know, move some players around, and I would literally delete players. These are players that I am willing to be wrong about. It's perfectly fine. If they, if they hit and I didn't draft them, fine. But if they bust and I did draft them, fine. These are just these are the players that I personally like. So that that's how I would attack it, especially if people are using the same rankings. Thank cool. you, sir. Thank you for your question. Next question. Hey, ballers. What's um, up, I'm Connor from the Long Island, New York? Oh, oh what's going the, on? The. It's, it's never been referred to as the. It has tonight. <laughs> uh, well, my question is. Um, in a standard league, if you had the choice between two running backs of similar ranking, like Marlon Mack and Carrion Johnson, um, would you prefer the more dynamic back on the weaker offense mm. or the weaker pass catcher on the better offense? In a that's standard a, league. Standard, standard, that's a great league. question. Great question. What I, do you think? For me... Marlon Mack lover. Uh, yeah, he's look, your guy, right? Well, he's, he's my guy until further notice. Yeah. I love both of these players, and in a standard league, I would still side with Carrion Johnson because, <laughs> and and in the way that I the way that I s oh they want the drop. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, the 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 who wants to talk about Devin Funches? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, that's uh, my bad. We got guys. it out of the my system. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no more. You, yeah. but but it, who you know. wants to talk about? <laughs> Bill, all right, Blake all right, all right. All right. Keep cool, keep cool, my baby. Right, so, Mark. Mark. Okay, right. we've we've done, done the we done. played the hits. Answering a question. Jason, uh, be so serious. Phil philosophically speaking, you know, a lot of times people say uh, that they're willing to take the Derrick Henrys much higher, obviously the Marlon Max, the people that aren't going to be involved in the in the passing game as much. But the problem is sometimes those guys are not game script proof. So e even though they're not penalized by not being in their good games, they you know they're not penalized the for not catching the ball. If they're down big in that game, sometimes they you know especially Marlon Mack, he's not as involved in the games that they're losing. They rely on Naeem Hines. So carry on Johnson. I, I think he is game script proof. He might not have the giant massive games because he's on the worst offense. I think it's good advice yes on here because it can be deceptive if you're in a standard you can be so focused on just taking these standard oriented players and then you don't know where to draft james white or you don't know where to draft these uh, past dynamic you know players later in the draft they can be steals a, a shout out to a great friend of the show scott barrett writes for pff he, he wrote up a great piece about marlon Mack and how his production came in games where the colts not only won but they crushed their opponent and then when things were a lot tighter or a little bit more neutral his production was not so great so i'm with, I'm he, with he wasn't on the field then yeah i'll, yeah. I'll take carry on over in those two guys great All right, thanks for the question thank you guys next question what's going on guys my name is tom what's uh, up tom not much this uh, is, this question is it was rhetorical tom <laughs> <laughs> So, Not bad. How are you? Body. <laughs> hey, also, before you jump into it, we want to give a shout-out to Pristine Auction because Tom won this oh! helmet. Tom won this It's a, a beautiful, full-sized 
autographed Saquon Barkley jersey from How the do New you, York Giants. By the way, hold on. You might not get to ask a question tonight because this is the second time I've had to give a Seahawks fan a helmet. Look, the, the 12th man is, is it hurts very strong. It so bad. Look, I, I think Tom is either very happy or about to be a very wealthy man. Yeah. At the end of the night. What's your question, good sir? So uh, my question is, obviously, every year there's new OCs. Um, so is there any offensive coordinator whose scheme makes a fantasy player in particular just a little higher in your uh, average draft position? Yeah, if, for me, it's, it's, look, it's gross. I get it. But it's Chad O'Shea down in, in the Miami Dolphins bringing down the Patriots scheme. Well, I want to see if another team can actually do it. And, there are, and Albert Wilson, I think, is a player who – I think if he is healthy, and that's still a big if, I, I, I totally acknowledge that fact that it's going to come down to the wire for Albert Wilson, but I think that he can perfectly fit in with what he wants to do with a slot wide receiver like Wes Welker or Julian Edelman. So Chad O'Shea, I think he can make the Dolphins better than we expect. What about Daryl Bevel in Detroit speaking yeah. to on Johnson and the opportunity there? Yeah, Because he's you, run first. Except for the Marshawn Same. play. Right. Whoa. Yeah, no, he's run. Whoa. He's going to run the ball as much as he can. That, that's a great one. Obviously, uh, in Arizona, we've got Cliff Kingsbury bringing a system that yeah. is perfect for Kyler Murray. I would also throw out uh, Joe Mixon. He has Zach Taylor coming in as an offensive-minded head coach so the Bengals could get him we more involved. We all want things to be fixed for our players. Yes, it doesn't do. always work out that way, but... At least with the offensive-minded head coaches, it lends towards the, the fantasy outcomes that we want to see, which is more play calls overall. I mean, I know Arizona, they're aiming for 90 plays a game. If you're on the field more often, there's just more probability that you're going to do something for fantasy owners. Right. We want the offense on the field. You hear that, Matt Patricia? We want the offense on the field. So thank you for the question. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And congrats on the Saquon yes, helmet. Yes, yes. Again, hey, we're wrapping up. We want to thank St. Jude again. We want to thank Pristine Auction for their partnership on the tour. We want to thank you guys, the Foot Clan. Thank you so much for making tonight New fun. York City! You guys were great. If you're listening at home to the podcast and you think, I want to get in on these shenanigans, you can still head to BallersLive.com if you're right. in San Francisco or Phoenix. If you're watching on YouTube... Uh, you gotta come. Hey, what's up? Gotta come hang out. You gotta come hang Thank out with us. Thank you, New York. Thank you, New York. Thank you so much. You're beautiful people. to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.